How come this hiker is still missing? On October 12, 2016, a Pacific Crest Trail through hiker named Chris Fowler was dropped off at a trail junction near White Pass, Washington. There, he went inside of a store named Cracker Barrel, had a cup of coffee, and then was seen leaving the store by a clerk. The clerk said that she assumed that he was just going back to trail. About an hour later, he did shut off his cell phone. He has not been seen and he has not been heard from ever since and there has been zero cell phone activity ever since as well. So a little bit more information about Chris himself. He has been a avid hiker. His family say that that's something that's in his blood. He grew up with his dad and stepmom because his biological mom did pass away at an early age. And then he did go to college and graduated and started working in logistics for a truck company. He did go through a harder time just before going on the Pacific Crest Trail. He was going through a hard but amicable divorce. And he also had his truck company that he was working for leave the state that he worked in. So he felt like at that time that the Pacific Crest Trail would be a really great venture. And if there was any time, then this would be the time to go. At the time of his disappearance, he was 34 years old. And his stepmom, Sally, who was very involved in the search for him currently and in the past said that he was a natural outdoorsman and that it was something very soothing for him before the attempt of the pacific crest trail he did do some shakedown hikes with a friend in colorado and he even started the through hike with that particular friend but both had the agreement that if one of them had a different pace that they would be okay that it separate from each other Chris was also a amateur photographer and because of that he would hike a lot slower because he wanted to take time to take pictures and so in the end he and his friend did separate and therefore he was hiking alone. One of the things to notice, Chris did get his trail name called Sherpa because as he was hiking the Pacific Crest Trail, there were some section hikers and they asked him for directions. He gave them directions and the next day, those same section hikers saw him and shouted out, look, there is our Sherpa. So the name stuck and he decided to go with it and that was his trail name for the Pacific Crest Trail. Now, just like most through hikers, he was doing the typical resupply in towns and he did have an agreement with his family that he would check in every two weeks just to let them know that he was okay. But it didn't appear that they had continuous contact on a daily basis, but generally he would check in every two weeks. So it wasn't until the end of October when his family realized that they hadn't heard from Chris in about three to four weeks. And that is when the search started to begin. Once Sally and family realized that they hadn't heard from Chris, they started to contact authorities as well as contact other hikers. And none of them had seen Chris since around mid-October. In addition to that, Sally noticed that because Chris had continuously sent himself packages to different locations for resupply, he had picked up one package, but he didn't pick up the next package in the next town. The last time he picked up a resupply package was in Yakima County, and the next package that was scheduled for a later pickup was never picked up by Chris. Sally and family were discouraged by authorities because the authorities generally believed that Chris was trying not to be found. But Sally strongly disagreed with this because she had had a conversation with Chris a, a while ago saying that he said to her, if I ever get lost, I know that you will find me. And so she knew that he wanted her to find him. And so she never stopped. She never stopped searching for him. So going back to the day of October 12, 2016, Chris had stopped at a town named Packwood to do a resupply and then had somebody drop him off at around 3.30 at that White Pass Junction. Once again, he went into the store uh, called Cracker Barrel, had a cup of coffee and then eventually left. He did try to contact his father via phone, but the father wasn't able to pick up the phone since he was at work and he missed the call. And then shortly after, Chris did shut off his phone. Now just keep in mind, this is something that most of us through hikers do. We do shut off our phone or we put it into airplane mode because it does uh, preserve our power and it doesn't drain our 
phone battery as much. So nobody's seen him since then, nobody's heard from him since then. There has been zero activity on his phone since then. One of the most important things to note is that about two days after Chris had last been seen, one of the biggest storms in the West Coast had rolled in and left about two feet of snow in certain areas of the Pacific Crest Trail. It was because of the storm that a lot of hikers actually decided to get off trail. And that is something that Chris most likely did not do. But most hikers did get off trail because it was a very, very concerning storm. Now, according to other people and other hikers who had met him, it seemed that Chris knew that there was going to be a storm. And it seems as though he went back on trail and probably got caught in the storm and died of hypothermia. The only problem is that he has never been located. Nothing of his has been located. None of his supply, none of his gear, no trace of him has ever been found. And so this is a very interesting fact and therefore it speaks to many other theories of what could have potentially happened to him. Nevertheless, there was a massive search by foot and by air and there was a claim by two bear hunters that they had seen him October 22nd near Blowout Mountain, which is about 60 miles away from White Pass. The distance as well as the timeline would fit with his traveling, but after police did do further investigation and there were some conflicts between the two bear hunters' statements, they do believe that this was just a bogus statement and that this must have not been Chris that they had seen. So what are some other theories that people believe what could have happened to Chris? Well, one thing that a lot of people believe that Chris just doesn't want to be found and he somehow disappeared and does not want anybody to find him. Another theory is that he was attacked by an animal. The problem with that again is the fact that nobody ever found any belongings of his, like any sort of backpack, gear, a sign of struggle, nothing like that. Some other people believe that there was foul play, that he might have come into connection with some bad people and somehow he was attacked and murdered. Most likely though, Chris did get caught in the storm and probably succumbed to the storm and hypothermia. There is another hiker who had spent some time with him on trail named Trace and he posted some video and a website about the fact that he moved all the way from Phoenix to Washington to personally search for Chris himself. He did state that Chris was not in a good shape physically. He was very skinny and very weak. According to him, he did say that Chris had been rather sick all of the month of September with possibly Giardia and that his equipment, his gear was not sufficient. He had a rain jacket that Trace felt like was not a good rain jacket, that it would wet out almost instantly. Uh, Chris potentially traveled with sandals and just didn't have any knowledge about hiking and camping in snow conditions. In addition to that, Trace does state that although Chris knew how to read a map and know a compass, he didn't seem to have very good navigation skills. Now this is all Trace's opinion because you know Chris's family does say that Chris was a natural outdoorsman so it really goes to question was Chris really good at being able to be in the woods or was he just not good at navigating. Now Trace did state that Chris was an unusually slow hiker and that he just was not in a good shape at the time of his disappearance which speaks to very very likely scenarios that on top of being caught in one of the biggest storms of Washington, he also didn't have the gear and equipment that he needed in order to survive. But also his body had gone through the ringer. I mean, most of us through hikers, we all know that by the time we get close to the end, we look raggedy. We look, we don't look good, right? And so he probably did look raggedy and probably didn't look good and he probably shouldn't have continued on. One of the things that I thought is maybe Chris went the wrong direction. Maybe he went southbound. But I did do some research and it looks like Chris signed some logbooks from White Pass going north. So that would definitely not support my theory of him having gone southbound. 
because I do believe, you know, there's been a big search for him and nothing had ever been found. And so that's very strange that nothing had, had been found. So I felt like maybe he went southbound, but that seems to not be the case. Now, I do have to state that even though nothing of Chris's has officially been found, his stepmother Sally in 2020 released a statement that there had been a bag found, a hygiene bag, about a mile and a half away from the Pacific Crest Trail on another trail, it's called the Laughing Water Creek Trail. And this was a hygiene bag that had the t typical belongings of what, you know, what Chris would have carried, but also what a lot of other hikers would have carried. Now, this bag did have a orange logo, and this is something that Chris, he loved the color orange. And in addition to that, the particular hygiene bag was manufactured in 2015 and discontinued manufacturing in 2016. And so this definitely coincides with the timeline of Chris being gone. Now they haven't been able to confirm that this is his hygiene bag because no DNA has been found on it, no fingerprint, and that's something apparently very normal if something is left out in the wilderness. Now also this bag had to be dug out of the mud so it is it's the chances of there being any sort of dna or fingerprints is just close to impossible so although nothing of his has ever been found they did find this hygiene bag and so a lot of search has been around this and i think that's really great news but again that was in 2020 we're here in 2023 and he still hasn't been found and as a through hiker myself, I do feel it is my duty to report on these missing hikers just because when we go out hiking, our family supports us on this venture of being gone for more than six months. And they accept the fact that we're gone. And then when a hiker actually truly goes missing, I cannot even comprehend the devastation the family must feel. So I think it is in our duty to report his disappearance as much as possible so that maybe if if somebody heard or seen anything, maybe we can find him. Maybe we can bring him home. I think that is the most important thing. So thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that I was able to kind of like talk about Chris because he's been on my mind and I think it's very sad that he has still not been found.